I'm Gary Bowden, and welcome to another Winterfest edition of Zara TV Tutorials at ZaraZone.com. This month, what do you say we go for broke? I'm going to show you how to create a casino night fundraising poster that's got all kinds of gambling elements in it, like playing cards and roulette wheels. And I'm not only going to show you stuff that you might not know how to do already, but I'm also going to show you how to compose the thing, how to converge all these different elements. So come on, it's going to be fun. Because if it's not fun for you, it's not fun for me. And if it's not fun for me, I might as well just stand here for 10 minutes and play card tricks. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page until you see the download button. Click the button, download the zip archive, unpack it, and get ready to go. This month, I'm going to ask you to do three parts of this poster. The roulette wheel pattern, the uh, poker felt, and the headline. Now, first of all, we're going to probably tackle the most complicated of the three. This is phase one creating the roulette wheel border. To begin with, you need to create a circle that's 7.4 inches in diameter. You can see the figure there. So with the uh, elliptical tool, hold control and shift at a center point on guides and then drag it out this way. Now, once you've created the circle, why don't you go get the straight line tool from the uh, toolbar and you're gonna create a straight line from the center to just outside of the circle. And let's make it a little bit bigger, wider so you can see it. Now, what I want you to do is to take the selector tool and uh, activate the rotation handle visibility and then take the center, the rotational center, and put it at the center of the circle. What we need are uh, several uh, slices to this pie. Now, I want 80, so I'm gonna divide 360 by 80 and I get 4.5. So, press Control K duplicate the line, type in 4.5, hit enter, and now what we have is um, 1 80th of an arc. Now what you want to do is hold Alt with the uh, selector tool to go to sketch mode. So you've selected both. Go get the editor tool, and although these two guys coincide at the bottom, they aren't connected yet. So take one or the other, and when you see the little plus sign, you'll see down in the status bar that you now have one line. So go get a line drawing tool and start extending that line and then close it. And you'll note that you have a shape now if you take a look at the status line. What we want to do now is to righten the slice here because it's leaning to the, uh, leaning to the right. So uh, enable the rotation handle and put it dead center. Half of 4.5 is 2.25. So we want to rotate it back by half its value. So um, if you typed a negative, type a positive value. If you typed a positive before, type a negative value. And as you can see, it's sitting there. Right, click and drag, and then release to uh, drop a copy of that. Shift, click, select both. And then with the blend tool, drag from one to the other. Distance is of no concern here uh, between the objects because uh, we're going to hit pause for a second and figure out the math that we need to blend the blender on a circle. Now to create 80 slots on the wheel we need 40 objects because every other slot is going to be an empty slot. It's going to be filled then empty filled then empty. Then you need to subtract 2 from 40 because the beginning and the end shapes don't count in the blend. So we're down to 38 now. But the final number you need is actually 39 in the blend because the first and last objects will coincide around the circle. So I think we're ready to continue. So let's click play. And we're back to these blends. Type 39 in there. And with the selector tool, select the blends, select the circle, go up to the info bar, and wrap the shape around and keep the uh, orientation. Now we want these pieces to um, join at the center, so control click on that original circle after you've duplicated it, as you can see here, until the uh, points of these 39 objects converge. Now what you want to do is to um, create duplicates, two more duplicates. Hold shift, right mouse button, drag inward, and then release.
to create one row of what looks like squares there, you see, when these two shapes are evaluated, and then a second row of squares. If you look at the uh, original design, you'll see why uh, I did this. Now, what I need you to do now is to uh, select the inner and the outer ring, and then choose uh, Subtract Shapes. That's Control 2. And you can fill it with black now. You've got a black ring. I want you to press Control K to duplicate that. Press Control B to send it to back because we're going to use it a second time. And uh, what I want you to do is to select all the pieces and press Control Shift E to convert this blend to uh, shapes and then control click on the unwanted duplicate and the inside red shape and all you have are the green shapes now the green triangles so once that is cloned I want you to select the band and select the object and choose intersect control 3 the uh, pieces aren't apparent at the moment what I want you to do is to take the black band and the green squares and group them and then use that second circle that we had to slice. Now we have an inner ring and an outer ring. Now let's fill in those shapes. And what you did was you uh, selected one of the green shapes, one of the green bands, sorry, and filled it with red. Now that these two pieces um, have been sliced, what you can do is um, just select the outer ring, get the rotation handle, and uh, rotate them a little bit so you have alternating shapes. And um, I think that's a pretty neat looking uh, border that we can put text in. And it looks very much like a roulette wheel or the uh, uh, hole in an acoustic guitar you could also use it for. If we're ready now, let's get to uh, phase two, which is designing the neon headline. What I did was I began with a um, typeface called Harlow Solid. It didn't fit all of my needs, so what I did was I converted it to curves and then uh, did a little customizing work, and this is what you will find in the Casino Night document. I've uh, chosen to uh, keep these different colors because some pieces are going to lay on top of each other. Now with the bevel tool, choose Rounded 2 and then drag to the inside. And we're going to zoom up a little bit here. What I want you to do after you have that uh, uh, puffy looking, what I want you to do is to uh, change the, uh, the lighting direction so that you've got dark areas around the top and the left. Now you'll be very surprised that when we take a um, custom pressure profile, let me zoom in here a little bit, and choose a light color and draw a little bit, on top of the dark hair with the light color, all of a sudden it begins to look like glass. You see that stroke? Okay, once you have that, I believe that pressure profile is called Fallout. Go get the line color from the color editor. Turn that to a very light pink, almost white. You see there? And then start drawing around the dark areas of the word casino. And you will see like magic that this begins to take on sort of a plastic, sort of a glass look. Um, it's stylized, but regardless of that, uh, it looks appropriate for the poster and the legibility is good. Let's flash forward a little bit to see how the work is coming out. And uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to edit those strokes that you've made with the editor tool. And here's a little preview of what Casino Night's going to look like when it's finished. We're on to phase three now, which is making the poker table felt and then putting some of these other design pieces together. So once you have a casino night on an eight and a half by 11 page, uh, with a rectangle tool, um, drag a square, and we're gonna put it to back after a while. And why not uh, take the casino night finished poster and use the eyedropper tool to uh, sample a couple of green colors. Your fill is going to be uh, fractal plasma. Now one color is going to be a um, medium green, the other color is going to be a darker green. So uh, play with these colors, keep the color editor open, 
And uh, once you see that you've got something that looks just a little, um, a little rough, a, a little pocked, like, uh, like the skin of an orange, this is going to be our impression of the uh, poker table felt. Now, if you're very careful with the selector tool, you select a corner of the rectangle so you do not scale the contents. You're changing the rectangle and not the rectangle and the pattern. And I'm dragging that down there and a control shift B will put it to back. Uh, Casino Knight pops very nicely against that grain. What I'm going to ask you to do is to push it a little farther though. Um, choose the shadow tool and then uh, drag on the uh, successive pieces. Now what you can do to get that shadow consistent among these pieces is to uh, copy the shadow when it's selected and um, when you've created another shadow on another letter press Control shift a and that will paste the uh, attributes the uh, the uh, attitude the depth the transparency and the uh, blur amount that you would copy to the clipboard you can see there now you might want to take some of the pieces move them up move them down that's why i uh, created this piece for you and in, uh, in different sections so what we have now is uh, Casino Night. You might want to choose to group this so you can move the piece around a little bit more. And I'm putting it right about here toward the top of uh, the poster that we're creating. After we have that there, you want to paste in the uh, roulette wheel and uh, press Control B to put it back and then Control Shift F to put it forward one layer. Now what you can do again is um, use the uh, Control Shift technique with the elliptical tool to uh, create a circle from the center and choose a uh, solid color fill, white. Press Control Shift B um, a couple times to put it to back and we've got the uh, felt and the uh, neon and the roulette wheel and I think you've had just about enough work put this away save it and that's pretty good looking uh, for a beginning for a part one next month we're going to be adding uh, the other elements to make it look finished like the picture left so I hope you had fun and I'll see you later on